hello let's talk about book first of all i'm aware of the lighting situation but i planned to film this morning when it was beautiful and sunny and now it's literal thunderstorm out there so we're working with what we've got uh today let's talk about my non-fiction shelves now i'm standing up next to my shelves because there's a lot of books in this section my shelves are let me show you so my shelves this is one of my non-fiction shelves they are organized in dewey decimal number order and so last time we talked about this section the zero hundreds and today we're moving over here to the one hundreds which goes there and there right to uh, this one uh, and this is the rest of my shelf probably not in focus anyway let me put you back on your makeshift tripod uh, hey can you say hello to everyone you say hello say i love to climb on mama's books don't you not today though because i've got to make a video okay okay the 100 category focuses on philosophy and psychology. I don't have any of the 100 subcategory that focuses on philosophy and psychology. I don't have any 110s, which is metaphysics, which is about the nature of reality. I don't have any 120s, which is about epistemology, which is theory of knowledge, the theory of existence. It's all it's too much philosophy for me. Anyway. I have a lot of one three zeros which relate to paranormal phenomena starting with one three zero point nine four the natural and the supernatural in the middle ages by robert bartlett this came out in 2008 130.94 early modern supernatural the dark side of european culture 1400 to 1700 by jane p davidson this came out in 2011 i want to say 2012 um I don't know about dark side of European culture, like the supernatural just existed in the minds of people. It's just completely normal. Wouldn't they wouldn't have called it supernatural, especially like in the medieval period too. Um, it was preternatural and things like you couldn't have things like demons and devils and gods and angels without some sort of conception of the the preternatural. Also early modern but takes the time from 1400 early modern is often especially in england dated from the tudor period henry the eighth and onwards through to the industrial revolution so this is a bit earlier than that but also maybe to give context because just because we as historians categorize things in a certain time period doesn't mean that everything changed and everything starts again next from 2011 uh, this is 133.43 witchcraft magic and related practices this is philip c Armand's england's first demonologist reginald scott and the discovery of witchcraft this is a look at reginald scott who lived in the time of elizabeth i and the book that he wrote called the discovery of witchcraft just context around scott and the book that he wrote next under 133.43 i'll do these together they're both by scott cunningham i have earth air fire and water more techniques of natural magic and that's from 1991 and cunningham's encyclopedia of wicca in the kitchen this is from 2003 these are both related to wicca and magic practice in that way this one has spells this one has recipes relating to elements and planets and that sort of thing that wicca likes to do more about wicca is 132.43 a witch's bible a complete handbook by janet and stuart farrah this came out in 1984 it's a nice big chunker have i read it no and then we get on to witchcraft so we're still in the 133.43 uh, these are more academic works. This is Witchfinder, a 17th century English tragedy by Malcolm Gaskill. Malcolm Gaskill is like a name in witchcraft studies. This one came out in 2005. I haven't read it because I'm not that interested in the English witch hunts, but uh, who can resist buying books about witchcraft? No me. This is Ronald Hutton, who is 
one of the names in witchcraft studies and paganism and druidism and that sort of thing Ron Ron Hutton's The Witch, A History of Fear from Ancient Times to the Present. If you are interested in the study of witchcraft, the academic study of witchcraft and the history of witches and magic, this is excellent. It's not that long for an academic work. It's not that dry for an academic work. I think I listened to it on Audible and it was completely listenable sometimes. Academic works on audio are even worse than reading them. Uh, this one was great. I'm just looking at the date 2017. Highly recommend. Put it on your TBR if you're into magic. We're still in the 133.43. We're still talking about magic, witchcraft, and related practices. This is Richard Kierkegaard's Forbidden Rites and Necromancer's Manual of the 15th Century. This is from 1997. This is uh, a translated manuscript from the 15th century and then some contextual essay around it. This one in particular is from a necromancer. A lot of necromancy and um, ritual magic from the medieval period happens in monasteries so the texts are often in Latin and so it's been translated. If you're at all interested in the study, academic study of magic and witches, uh, you need to read this book, Magic in the Middle Ages by again Richie Kikatha. Uh, this one was published in 19... no 1989 and it's a foundational work in this field um, it's really quite thin it's really just a starting point for all this academic study still in the 133s this is uh, a, t a textbook for uni I've got lots of tabs in there and this is the witch hunt in early modern Europe this is the fourth edition by Brian P Levac this was published in 1987 not this edition not the fourth edition <gasps> I've highlighted this book. This edition published 2016. Oh, I'm so proud of me putting highlights in a book. Continuing with the 133s, this is Darren Aldridge, The Supernatural in Tudor and Stuart England. I had a lot of discussions with Chatty G about whether this should be in the witchcraft and magic section or the supernatural section. You'd think from the title it would be in the supernatural so I'm still unsure but that's the power of categorizing and adding labels to your own personal library is you can put things where you want I'll come to more of that later Chatty G and I decided to put it here in the 133.43 but it might go back in the 138s anyway the supernatural in Tudor and Stuart England this came out in 2016 basically an introduction into supernatural beliefs in England we're still in the 133s. We talked about Reginald Scott and their discovery of witchcraft before, and that is this book. This one is, can you see that? It's, it's page reproduction from a translated copy. Um, because obviously, well, maybe not obvious to you, Scott would have been writing in an older style, form of English, early modern English, which is readable. Republication of the 1930 edition. This one came out in... 1989. It's an excellent primary source of the way that this particular person was writing about witchcraft in the 16th century. Oh, the, the actual date is 1584. It's in my notes if I'd read them. Next from 1996, we're still in those 133.43s, is Instruments of Darkness, Witchcraft in Early Modern England by James Sharp. Now, I bought this because my honours thesis was about, kind of about witchcraft in Early Modern England, uh, but I haven't actually read this one because I didn't finish my thesis. <laughs> I didn't get to it. Again, if you are interested in the academic study of magic, um, uh, this one is a foundational work that you need to read. It's Keith Thomas, Religion and the Decline of Magic. This one came out in 1971. Um, it looks long. It's not long. It's really interesting. It's definitely something that you need to add to your reading list if this is your vibe. From 2003, there's Heresy, Magic and Witchcraft in Early Modern Europe by Gary K. Waite. This has chapters including The Devil, Heresy and Magic in the Later Middle Ages, The Reformation and the End of the World, The Reformation, Magic and Witchcraft, Religious Pluralism and the End of the Witch Hunts. So a little academic book about witch hunting. And finally, in my 133s, in my 133.43s, 
is cunning folk and familiar spirits shamanistic visionary traditions in early modern british witchcraft and magic this is by emma Wilby and it came out in 2005 and this looks at shamanistic practices and how we can take that example and apply it to what we know of witchcraft in england so that's all my 133 babies and i love them so but we must move on Next is one for O, which I don't think is being used anymore. Don't quote me on that. It was philosophical. It was philosophical systems of thought. I don't know if it is being used anymore. And then we have the one five O's, which is psychology. Now, a lot of the books I've got here actually don't get categorized in a DDC system. They because they're self help books. They are usually um, cover too many topics too many areas to be just neatly placed into this category but all my how to life books are here and so I'm comfortable in my library putting them in 150 psychology so we have if I pull them out they're gonna fall down atomic habits by James clear this came out in 2018 and I actually really liked it every how to life book tells you the same tale in a little bit of a different aspect. They're mostly written by white successful men, uh, but this one I really liked. Essentially it is every everything you do is a vote towards the person that you wanna be. So every Tim Tam that you eat is a vote towards being a Tim Tam eater. Every glass of water that you have instead of coffee, you're a water drinker, not a coffee drinker. That resonated with me, I liked that. And he didn't lean too hard on the exercise health metaphors, examples, not metaphors, um, which a lot of these self-help books do. They want you to be bigger, faster, stronger. That's not always what we want. I've given that the number one, 58.1, personal improvement and analysis. And all these how to life books are under that category. I'm just holding the shelf here so that the books don't fall down. The next one actually does get categorized here in the DDC. And that is Stephen, Cove, Stephen R. Covey's the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, 158.1. Uh, this came out in 1989 and I have the 25th anniversary edition and I have not read it, <laughs> but it lives here on my shelf. Next up under 158.1, I have the two Mark Manson books, uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck and Everything is Fucked, a book about hope. This one was 2016, this one was 2019. This one was better. If you're gonna read something, read this one, but I mean, again, with How to Life, it's basically telling you choose where to spread your fucks because you have so few to give. And this one, I didn't finish it. It wasn't great. Oh, man, the system is falling apart. Next in the one, 58.1, I have Wintering by Catherine May. This cover is really nice. This is a little self-helpy memoir of a lady who um, had to stop and rest because she encountered health troubles and all the things that she tried to get herself back to where she had been it is it might resonate with you for me as somebody who has always had a chronic well not always always in my adult life had a chronic illness that requires me to take notice to rest to be aware of what i'm doing it's smacked of privilege in a way that these other books written by men did not is that sexist of me i think it is um because all these books in the self-help genre come from a place of privilege and probably money. So I've mixed feelings about it, but the cover is really nice. <laughs> I don't know why this one isn't properly catalog categorized in the DDC. This is Burnout, Solve Your Stress Cycle by Emily and Amelia Nogoski. This is targeted at women and being able to just be nice to yourself and stop getting so stressed. That was a bit like airy fairy. Um, I think weirdly targeted at women in that be nice to yourself way. Um, when really, is mum guilt the problem of my stress? No. Uh, wintering came out in 2020. Burnout came in 2019. And the last one, okay. So that's the one five O's where I put things in that maybe shouldn't be there, but in my library, they are. Next up is the one six O's of logic. No thanks. One seven O of ethics. No thanks. <laughs> 180 of ancient, medieval, and eastern philosophies. I don't have anything under that, but I do have 190, which is modern western philosophy. That is 
A Little History of Philosophy by Nigel Warburton. This came out in 2011, 2011. I've got it under 190. And this is just bite-sized chunks of Western, Western tradition of philosophers and their philosophies, uh, starting at Socrates, I want to say, and ending at Peter Singer. Um, there's 40 chapters in all. A quick read and I go more in depth on a review of this in my video that comes out in a fortnight and that's my 100s shelf thank you for hanging out with me and like I said in your personal library you can put things where you want a lot of this re I've actually rearranged it before I filmed in consultation with chat GPT uh, we have good discussions about where books should go some of these things in here are not where for example Trove the National Library of Australia puts books and not necessarily where I would have immediately placed them, but talking with Chatty G, it makes sense. So that's where I've ended up today. Obviously not everybody is as particular as me in their own personal library. And that's fine, you do you. And I will see you back here in a couple of weeks for the 200s. Bye.